Hey gang, Scott here. On One has released Photo Raw 2024, and the marquee feature is Brilliance AI. This video is one in a series about this feature, and in this video I want to go through an intermediate workflow with Brilliance AI, applying it, and then refining its results to suit your taste. If you haven't watched the overview video, go check that one out. It'll give you a foundation for what Brilliance AI is and how it's uh, interconnected into other areas of Photo Raw. So you get a good feel for you know, how to control it, how to set it up so it will only do the things you want it to do. And then these videos will show you how to uh, use it in, in various workflows in your photography. And before we jump in, if you are thinking of adding Photo Raw 2024 to your toolkit or any of the other On One plugins, check the show notes. I have an offer code there that can save you 20%. Gives me a little bit of support so I can do more videos like this. Uh, so I want to jump into uh, a photo that I showed you in a previous video where I'd done the, the Brilliance AI in Browse because Brilliance AI is just part of Browse, it's available. Uh, but what we'll do is we'll reset this photo and do the entire bit in develop. So I've reset the photo, D key to get into the edit module. All right, so I'm in develop and let's turn on Brilliance AI. Brilliance AI, I'll go look around on the photo and figure out what's out there and apply some changes. And it applies the default amount, and we have some controls. Now, as I look at this before and after, I right, just use the backslash key before holding it down, after. You know, I, I like the sky. The sky's gotten nice and rich, but the foreground before had the very nice, warm uh, sunshine glow from this. Uh, you know, this was just after sunrise, and I'm kind of losing that a bit with Brilliance AI. So I have some controls here to refine things. I have the amount slider, you know, how much or how little of Brilliance AI do I want to do? And I can already see this is a push and pull. As I pull amount lower, the foreground is getting enriched. I like what's happening in the foreground, but I'm losing that richer sky. I push to the right, um, you know, the sky quickly goes uh, beyond where I'm comfortable and the foreground gets you know, even, even duller. What about the tone and color amounts? I have a control for tone. Now tone itself, you know, I can see it pulling back on the sky because it's it's trying to rain in. You know, don't get don't get too uh, too saturated. Don't get too uh, too crazy in that sky. It's doing some good things for the foreground, but color I'm expecting is going to do even more. So here I'm pulling color back, and I'm not getting as much of that color cast correction really. So I have this push and pull. I think I'll leave tone where it was, amount where it was, and color. I'm dialing back so I get that richer foreground. Now what about the sky? Well, I still have the options in the local adjustments. These are the regions that the Brilliance AI found, and one of them is sky. Well, sure enough, if I push this to the right, I'm gonna start seeing enrichment in the sky. And so what I'm able to do by virtue of having these regions available to me is I can dial back the color on, on the photo overall. And as you saw, what the net result was is that the foreground took on the color that I wanted, this warmer, you know, a nice uh, morning glow. I lost some of the richness in the sky, but I can come into the regions and amp that up. And what's going on under the hood, if you watched the introduction video, you know, the overview, you know that Brilliance AI created local adjustments based on those regions. So it created one for flora and it created a second one for the sky. And that's really what I'm controlling here. Now, if I push sky to this, you know, 43 or whatever, I'll go over to locals, I'll find the sky and that's what I'm doing. I'm controlling the opacity, the strength of this effect. And what's going on in the, the sky here? You know, it's increasing contrast, it's decreasing highlights. Are we doing anything with color? You know, a little bit of saturation, but then controlling all of that with this opacity slider. And if I wanted to do something a little different, I have those controls here. But I have the ease of use right here in Brilliance AI is to just take that and control it right from a single panel in develop. And for photos where the regions are, you know, quite clear in a landscape like this, but you can imagine this is the same if you've got a portrait, if you have a vehicle, you know, any, any type of clear subject, 
you've got these things right here and you can dial everything in just using the Brilliance AI panel. And now from here, I have the photo in, in pretty good shape. I want to add my, my finishing touches, my signature style on it. And that's where I'm jumping over into effects. So let's, you know, let's finish this off. We jump over into effects. And for this one, uh, I think I want the sunshine filter and maybe pull its opacity down a little bit so it's not super strong, but just giving that nice warm glow and a bit of dynamic contrast. And again, I'll, I'll pull back. I don't want it too too crispy on this particular photo, pulling it down to about there so that I've got my, my finished work, but leveraged Brilliance AI to do the heavier lifting for me. I didn't have to go visit tone and color and hit auto and then, you know, deal with the, the color thing. And now let me do a couple of regions to, to tonally balance things because the sky needs to be a little darker. Or the foreground needs to be a little brighter and all of those things. I let Brilliance AI lay the foundation for me used its controls to kind of tweak and pull things and then got into my signature style. Uh, so that's like an intermediate workflow with Brilliance AI. Hope you found it useful. If you've got questions, go ahead and drop them below. And until next time, my name's Scott Davenport. Have fun.